Hello, everybody. Do you have a favorite Bible character? Oh, I know it's hard to choose because there are so many Bible characters that we like. and We like their stories. We like to hear their experiences. Or sometimes we'll hear their story and say, oh, that's me. Or I can identify with that. How about Peter? Do you ever feel like Peter and kind of impulsive and, and just say whatever comes to your mind? Or maybe you're an Esther. Maybe you evaluate things a little bit and, and think them through. I like Moses in the Old Testament. Moses, he at an early age was a river rafter. Did you know that? Put out on the river in the weeds, and then he was rescued. Hey, that's a good thing to be rescued when you're on the water. And then he grew up in a palace, and that's got to be a pretty good deal, don't you think? To be rescued and then to go to a palace. But I'll tell you what I like about Moses from the very, very beginning. God had a purpose for Moses' life. From the bulrushes to the palace to the desert, God had a purpose for Moses. Do you know that God has a purpose for your life? Now, I don't know what it is. And I like to say that if I did know what God's purpose for your life was, I wouldn't tell you. I want you to be able to discover the joy and the excitement and the anticipation of what God wants to do in your life. Can you imagine standing before a bush and fire is coming out of this bush? Normally, that bush would burn up. The heat would destroy the bush, but not the burning bush. Because God had a purpose for Moses in that burning bush. God was telling Moses, I'm doing something special on this bush. Oh, it's on fire and it's burning, but it's not burning up. Wow. I would have stopped. If I was on a hike and saw that bush burning, I would have stopped. And Moses stopped. And then he heard God's voice. Hey, that's a good lesson for a lot of us. Slow down. Listen for God's voice. God said to Moses, Moses, take your shoes off. You are on holy ground. Not just any normal desert ground. This is holy ground because I am here. Do you know that you're surrounded by holy ground? I happen to think that churches that have been dedicated to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, our loving God, are places of holy ground. And that's why when we enter into churches, we have a reverent heart, a reverent mind, a reverent spirit, because we're standing before the very creator of the universe. There's no God like our God standing on holy ground. God had a purpose for Moses. What was that purpose? What will it be? Moses stayed around long enough. He didn't run away from that burning bush. He listened for what God wanted him to do. Well, as our story continues in the life of Moses, when God has a purpose for you, he'll be relentless in making sure that you understand it. Just like Jonah, he stayed on him had a place for Jonah to go. Just like Peter. Love, Peter. 
loved me more than anything else. Moses, I've got a job for you to do. I want you to lead my people. I want you to take them out of bondage, out of slavery, and lead them to a land flowing with milk and honey, the promised land, if you will. Well, Moses said, how will they know? How will all of God's people know that, that you've chosen me to do this? Well, fair question. Fair, fair question. Not long ago, I had the privilege of going to Africa on a short-term mission trip. There we helped with a medical clinic. It was amazing to work with the Maasai people out in, in the wilderness. A desert land sometimes, and then sometimes a little vegetation. Lots of wild animals. Lots of people that needed medical attention. They lived in their bomas. Their huts that are dung and mud, all plastered together. No windows, just a chimney. They have a fire in that boma. And can you imagine the smoke that fills it? And when the young animals are born, they bring them from the outside, inside, into the boma. And they raise them and, 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 and have them fed until they're old enough to be on their own, all inside them. Oh, they had breathing challenges and things that filled their lungs. And so we helped treat them during, during the day. And they were so thankful for any medical attention. The Maasai would come by and visit us and dress in their beautiful robes, their pretty uh, handmade beads that they would wear and necklaces and, and chains around their wrists and down on their sides. And they were so friendly. The Maasai people, some of the some of the warriors especially, can vertically leap three to four feet off the ground from a standing position. I can't do that very much with just a couple inches. They just leap up and they celebrate life. Such good people. I watched as they came by and some of the Maasai warriors carried with them a cane, a rod, a staff, whatever you'd like to say. This one I purchased from one of the warriors. It's a beautiful piece. It has an elephant, giraffe, zebra, lion, and a tiger. All of this was made and carved from a single piece of wood. Handmade, hand painted. It's kind of my favorite little cane and uh, token uh, from my Kenya visit. Sometimes the Maasai warrior uh, at a day of celebration or on a special occasion will walk with this cane, all carved from a single piece of wood. Is it valuable? Oh, probably not worth a lot of money. Is it valuable to me? Sure. It's full of memories. I like this cane. So it hangs on my wall next to an African picture. And every time I see it, I think of the good people in Kenya. Well, I brought another cane today. This one is pretty plain. But it's got a story. If I were to lose my Kenyan cane, I'd feel pretty bad. But I gotta tell you, I'm pretty attached to this walking stick. It's 42 years old. One Sunday afternoon at a flea market in North Carolina, I met a gentleman who had about 10 to 12 sticks of eight to 10 feet of wood. And as I began to converse with him and talk, uh, I said, what are you doing? He says, oh, I make walking sticks out of these pieces of wood. I said, you do? How much are they? He said, $5. And 
And I said, you can make a walking stick out of this just plain piece of wood. He said, I sure can. Let me measure you. And I said, you know what? Deal. I gave him $5 and he measured me. Just right. He said, if you'll come back in a couple hours, I'll have your stick ready for you. And I said, I can't wait. I'll see you in a couple hours. I went and I'm sure I found some kettle corn to eat, maybe an ice cream cone or two. And then I came back. And sure enough, out of that single piece of wood, he had carved me a walking stick. Pretty simple. But I've had this stick for 42 years. I've hiked the Appalachian Trail with it. I've hiked up mountains. I've hiked around. And it has a special place in my office where I always know where it is. When I have to move or go anywhere, one of the first things I pack and wrap up is my walking stick. Now, it's not pretty. It's not special. I notice here it's now got a little crack up in the handle where it's dried up. But I don't think it's going to split on me. I love this old walking stick. Do you know that Moses had a walking stick? It was called a rod. Uh, they would use that rod sometimes, I'm sure, to help support, help to walk, help to pull along, help to push. Sometimes... For defense, to fend off an animal, to separate animals that might be fighting, to protect yourself. I've never had to do that. Hope I never have to. But it had a lot of meaning to Moses. It was his rod. And on that day in conversation with the Almighty God, God asked Moses to take that rod, his rod, and to throw it on the ground. Well, that seems pretty simple enough. So Moses took that rod and he cast it on the ground. And as soon as that rod hit the ground, you know the story, it became a snake. Oh, wait, a hissing snake. You know, I don't know how many of you like snakes or have snakes as pets. Some people do. Most people seem to be pretty squirmish about snakes. And I don't know, probably Moses, uh, given the odds, might have jumped back. He might have said, oh, what did you do with my rod? I need my rod to protect me against that snake, God. God said, Moses. I love how God always calls Moses by his name. God will call you by your name too. He knows your name. He won't forget your name. Moses, pick the snake up by the tail. <laughs> I know enough about snakes to know that you don't pick up a snake. You don't pick up a hissing snake snake by the tail. You pick him up by the tail and his head comes around and he bites you. Uh, wait a minute. Pick him up by the tail? You don't mean that, God. Pick the snake up by the tail, Moses. Well, the bush burned up. Well, it was on fire, but it never burned up. I guess... I better trust you. And Moses reached down, picked up the snake, and instantly his rod was restored. The hissing snake became his walking stick again, his security. Wow. God, you just performed an, another miracle for me. And God's saying, Moses, I have a purpose for your life. I want you to trust me. 
with everything you have. Moses put your hand in your in your in your coat. He put his hand in. Moses, pull your hand out. Pulled his hand out, and his hand was covered with that dreaded disease of leprosy. No! Look! My flesh is going to be all eaten away. It will increase. It will go up my arm. I'll look. Moses, put your hand back in your cloak. In. Now pull it out, Moses. And his hand was restored. Moses, I have a purpose for your life. Will you trust me? Young people, will you trust God with your life? Not your friends. Not what the world says. Not yourself. But trust God for your life. Well, one more thing, Moses. I want you to speak for me. I want my words to be your words. Matter of fact, I will put my words in your mouth. And out of your mouth will come my words to the people. Oh, God, no, wait a minute. I've seen the miracles. I'm ready to trust you, but, but, but I don't speak so good. Um, I, I st stutter all the time. You know I, 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 I don't speak well. I've been with animals. I've been in the de desert. I, I'll put my words in your mouth. Oh, God, take my brother Aaron. You've heard Aaron talk. He is eloquent. He uses words I don't even understand. Choose Aaron to be your spokesperson. And God said, Moses, I choose you. Now take your rod. I want your rod to become my rod. You've seen what I can do. And the rod of Moses became the rod of God. And with that rod, Moses could strike the rock and water would come forth. Moses could take that rod and strike the enemies of Pharaoh down, and they would fall at his feet because the rod of Moses became the rod of Almighty God. And then in that crowning act, Moses took his rod, which had become the rod of God, and placed it on the sea, the Red Sea, and the waters, what? They parted, and the wall of water went up on both sides. And with that rod, the people of God crossed over on dry river bed land. And once safely across, Moses took the rod to the Red Sea, and the waters came. And the walls came down, and the enemy died because the rod of Moses became the rod of God. I don't know what you might hold in your hand. Yeah, I know. It's not a rod. But maybe you're holding on to something pretty close to your heart. Maybe you're holding on to something that you think is really, really important. Maybe you're holding on to something that you know may not be the best thing for you. Maybe you're holding on to some bad relationships, some bad thoughts. Can you let them go? 
Can you give them to God? Can you trust him knowing that he has a purpose for your life? Oh, Moses isn't the only one that God has a purpose for. You and me. Will you trust him? Will you let him do for you what you cannot do for yourself? I want to trust my life into the hands of that kind of God today. How about you?